Family Theater presents Dennis Day, Tom Tully, and Gigi Perot. From Hollywood, the Mutual Network, in cooperation with Family Theater, presents Ruth, starring Gigi Perot and Tom Tully. And here is your host, Dennis Day. Thank you, Tony Lofrano. Family Theater's only purpose is to bring to everyone's attention a practice that must become an important part of our lives if we are to win peace for ourselves, peace for our families, and peace for the world. Family Theater urges you to pray. Pray together as a family. And now to our transcribed drama, Ruth, starring Tom Tully as Ezra, Gigi Perot as Ruth, and featuring Mae Clark as Hester. to be a bell. Maybe like the bell on this great camel. It moves every time he turns his head. Must have a wonderful sound. Oh, if I could only hear it just once. It grows dark, child. Hadn't you better be getting home? Perhaps if I could remember the sound of just one bell, it would all come back. It's going to be a cold night, and you're not dressed for the cold, young one. If I could only remember the sound. What's wrong with you, child? Have you no tongue? Or is courtesy to a Roman too much to ask? Here, look at me when I talk to you. Oh. If my children acted as you have been acting, do you know what I would do? Has my I... daughter committed some crime? Your daughter. Then her crime, if you can call it one, is not so great as yours. Is it your custom to leave a child of such tender years alone at the gate of the marketplace? You uh, must have children of your own, Centurion. I have. A son and a daughter in her 11th year, about like this one. But better cared for and better mannered. They listen when someone speaks to them. I would have listened, but I did not see you. You did not see me? She was stricken with a fever about five years ago. It left her without hearing. She hears no sound. But I can listen with my eyes. Yes, Ruth. You can listen with your eyes. Mm -hmm. She can read words as you form them on your lips. She learned to speak long before the fever came. We even learn some new words each day, don't we, child? Yes, Father. Remarkable. Have you seen enough, Ruth? Yes, Father. I brought her to look at the camel while I was making my purchases. It's a scrawny beast, but they are rare in Bethlehem, and she had never seen one at all. I wish I could show her some that I have seen. Great white beasts with trappings of gold thread and bells of solid bronze. The kings of the east ride them as Romans ride horses. I would like to see one of those camels and hear one of the bells. <laughs> you carry a heavy burden. It has no weight, Centurion. Ruth is the lightest part of my existence. She is cheerful and obedient and a great help to her mother. But I seldom take her beyond the gateway. If we were to become separated inside the marketplace, I would have no way of calling her. Becoming lost could be a frightening experience for, as you say, one of her tender years. Yes, especially with so many strangers in the city for the census. And being deaf. I thank the gods my children are not so afflicted. This is my inn. May I offer you some refreshment? Oh, thank you. If it is like the other inns in Bethlehem, you're overcrowded and hard-pressed for refreshments as it is. And I must check my guard. Well, my thanks for your concern about Ruth's safety. And remember, because of it, you are always welcome here. We must live in this town, Ezra. Walking down the street as friendly as you please with a centurion. Not just a Roman soldier. Hester, the guests. He was very nice, Mother. You hear that? From your own child. Roman or not, he meant a kindness. 
Kindness must be repaid with kindness. Now, let's hear no more about it. You better see to our guests. All right. You may not hear about it again from me, but be assured the neighbors will not be so kind. Why is she so angry, Father? Sometimes women get angry when they have much to do, Ruth. Your mother has had very much to do these past few days, and so she is very angry. Would you say it again, Father? I don't think I understood you. Child, perhaps you'd better help your mother. She has much to do. Now, Ruth, look at me, girl. Yes, Mother. We serve no more tonight or these people will never retire. Do you understand? Yes, Mother. Now, collect the empty wine jars and bowls and whatever else is laying about on the tables while I clean the hearth. Will you do that? Yes, Mother. I'll clear these tables. Here, girl, here, here, here. Come back with that. Stop her. Oh, youngster, that jar's a quarter full. My mother says I'm to clear away the empty ones. I said it's a quarter full. <laughs> or three quarters empty. <laughs> That's all I'm doing. But I said hey, it's... What's wrong, child? Uh, hey, did you mean to fill it up again? Uh, well, if that's what you want, then take the jar. Please, uh, please. Now, don't cry, girl. Take the jar if you want it. Good riddance to it, please. I say. I can't tell what you're saying when you all talk at once. I can't watch you all at once. Mm, what a strange child. Strange indeed. I am not strange. Please don't call me strange. What is this? I don't know. Did I say something to offend the child, or did you? Well, not that I know of. Mm. Uh, child. Child, do you know what this is? It, it's a coin. It is a coin. It will do wonderful things. Do you know what it will do? No, sir. It will buy a barley loaf, mm -hmm. or a bit of clove, or a handful of figs, or even a bit of honeycomb to chew on. Mm. It will? Indeed it will. I know not what I said or did to make you cry, but perhaps a bit of sweets might mend the breach between us, eh? I... I don't understand you. Eh? Strange. She... she watches your lips when you talk. What's this? <laughs> what are you doing? You deliberately smashed that dish. I did, and she didn't move a muscle. She was still watching you, waiting for you to speak. When you turned your head, she followed you. This child does not hear you. She's deaf. Deaf? A reader of lips. I have heard of such things. Are you deaf then, child? I can hear with my eyes. You see? I told you. Mm, never to hear a voice, or the song of a bird, or the wind in the trees. The wind in the trees? Has it a sound? Indeed. Oh, a fine sound. Like, like the whispering of angels. <clears throat> here, child, take the coin. And here, this will pay for the dish. I'm going to bed. Thank you, sir. Esther! Esther, are you nearly finished cleaning the wine bowls? Will I ever be finished? That Caesar should so crowd us for his foolish census. I hope I live to see the scepter back in Judah, if for no other reason than to see Rome get its due. What does she mean, Father? She means when the Messiah comes, little one, when the chosen one of God comes to lead us to victory. Will he come soon? Soon. It's my prayer that he will come in our lifetime and that we may see him, you and I and Mother. Our people have been waiting a long time, Ruth. He cannot come soon enough for me. Perhaps it will not be long now. There, that'll do it for tonight. Are the wineskins filled, Ruth? Your mother asked if the wineskins are filled, child. Oh, yes, Mother. And I banked the fire just a few moments ago. Uh, then we can go to bed. It's been a long day. You're a great help to me, my daughter, but these hours... Uh, oh! Well, go on to bed, Hester. I'll get it. I'll, I'll come with you. 
May I help you? Have you any room in keeper? I'm sorry, my friend. Oh, we... we we've been turning people away for two days. Have you tried the con? The con and the caravansary. Surely you must you must have something. We've journeyed far today. My wife is with child. We oh. must find something or she will have no protection against the cold. Oh, Mother. Oh, there, there's nothing, dear. If we took these people in, we would have to sleep in the street ourselves. You are here for the census? Yes. Then you are a son of David. Perhaps you have relatives in the city. There are none. Oh, I'm sorry. I wish I could help you, but there is no room, none at all. Father? Yes, Ruth? They could build a fire in the stable. But, Ruth, you know it is filled with the baggage and stock of the guests. Not even a lamb The could... old one? The one we don't use anymore. Oh, any shelter. I had forgotten about that. But for a son of David, Ezra. Well, there's nothing else, It'll Hester. be all right. I if you could just direct me. Of course, Ruth. Ruth, dear, fetch a ladder and we'll lead them to the stable. Father! Huh? Father! Uh, uh, <laughs> What is, it? what is it, Ruth? I dreamed I heard something. Oh, Ruth, Ruth, child, don't be frightened. You've had this dream many times since the fever. No, Father. This time it was different. It was like a singing, and it was bright and happy, and I wasn't afraid, not at all. And then I woke up and saw it. The new star. The new star? Ruth, you are still dreaming. No. See how bright it is outside? Bright enough for me to see your lips, even without a lamp. Well, so it is. Let us have a look at this new star of yours. Well, there is a new star overhead. It's quite beautiful. See how large it is? I've never seen anything like this before. It's unlike any star I have ever seen, blue and white at the same time. Father? Yes, little one? Does it... does it have any sound? Sound? No, Ruth. There's only the sound of the wind in the cedar trees. Hello. Aren't you the girl from the inn? Am I the girl from the inn? Yes, I am. My name is Ruth. <laughs> and mine is Joseph. It's a little late for you to be out, isn't it, Ruth? I brought some honey and barley bread. And this is a blanket. I see. The star kept me awake, and I thought about you and your wife. Is she all right? I've never seen her happier. Here. These are for you. Oh, you are good to us. Thank you. Would you like to see the child? See the child? Then the baby has come. He has come. And his name is Jesus. Come, Ruth. We will go and see him. Would you like to come closer, Ruth? It's all right. She did not hear you, Mary. The child is deaf. She reads lips. Ruth? Yes? Mary asked if you would like to come closer. Oh, may I? Of course you may. Oh, isn't he beautiful? Is he making any sound? No, Ruth. No sound. He's... He's so beautiful, so tiny and so beautiful. I shall remember this all of my life. And then what? Then she said some shepherds arrived and that they knelt down before this crib or manger and they said an angel had come to them. An angel? I asked her if it wasn't something she'd picked up at temple. You remember angels visiting shepherds in Abraham's time? She said it wasn't. Get on with it. Well, according to these shepherds, this child 
is the chosen one of God. The Messiah? And more than that, I'm afraid. More than that? More indeed. They said he was the son of God, according to Ruth. The son? Oh, I'd better sit down. My child, my child, what's gotten into her? Ruth is just a small girl with imagination. I suppose all children make up things. But this isn't like her. I think she must be telling what actually happened. I don't think this is her doing. Ezra, you must speak to her. But how can I? No, you must speak to her. We can't have our child making light of sacred things. And besides, what would happen if this got around? Ezra! All right, Hester, all right. I'll speak to her. will he be like, child? Well, some say he will ride out of the sky in a golden chariot, that he'll be great and strong, the kind of a man the people of Israel can follow. When the Messiah comes, won't he have to be a baby first? My goodness, child. Oh, what a question. What a question. Is my daughter annoying you? Uh, uh, oh, the innkeeper. No, 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 no. We were just enjoying the morning sun together. Talking about new stars and the Messiah. You've trained her well, innkeeper. She's a bright little thing in spite of her, uh, her affliction. Thank you. Ruth, I would like to speak with you. Come inside. Will you excuse us? Uh, of course, of course. Let us sit down here for a moment, little one. Sit down, Ruth. Yes, Father. Did you tell the gentleman about last night? Only about the star. Not about the infant and the shepherds? No. Good. Now, Ruth, what did the gentleman tell you about the Messiah? He said he'd be the chosen one of God, and that he would come leading many soldiers, and that he'd be the kind of a man the people would follow. Then he'd be a great king, wouldn't he? Yes, Father. Ruth, would a great king sent from God be born in a stable... Would he be the son of a carpenter? Would he, Ruth? I, I don't know. Believe me, he would not. But the shepherds said... Shepherds are not wise men, Ruth. Put little faith in the words of shepherds. Wait for those who are wiser to speak. If wiser men had said it, would you believe me, Father? If the priest from the temple or some great king, perhaps I would, but that did not happen. The child is just another infant. But, Father, he was so beautiful. You were beautiful when you were born, but you are not the Messiah. As your mother said, we must not make light of sacred things, Ruth. We must not spread stories that are not true. So I must ask you to promise me not to go back to the stable. Oh, Father, please. Ruth, promise. May I tell you something first, please? All right. Last night, after the shepherds had gone, I was looking at him. I was just standing at the manger looking down at him, and he opened his eyes and looked at me. I had the most wonderful feeling. Wonderful feeling, Ruth? It was just for a minute, but while he looked at me, I thought he saw everything I ever was and ever didn't ever wanted. And then what? And then I knew everything was going to be all right. What do you mean, little one? I don't know. I just felt that he... that he would take care of everything. That what was impossible wasn't impossible anymore. That he would take care of everything. I can't see you talk when you put your head in your hands, Father. Uh, I, uh... I said nothing, child. Please, don't make me promise not to see him again. Please, Father. Can a father deny his child hope? You may go back, Ruth. But remember, we will not speak of this outside the family. There is your wood, Hester. Do you want it by the fire or in the bin? By the fire. Are you so weary from one load of wood? 
troubled in mind, Hester. Oh? I have been to the stable. And? The child. The child is wonderfully beautiful. There seems a great feeling of peace about the place that was never there before. Mm -hmm. The mother. The mother's a remarkable woman, hardly more than a girl. But I believe it's the infant. It's a quality that seems to come from the infant. What are you thinking, Ezra? What am I thinking? I am thinking Bethlehem is a city of kings. Remember, David ruled from here. And I am thinking of the prophecy of Micchaeus. O thou, Bethlehem Ephrata, art a little one among the thousand of Judah. Out of thee shall come forth unto me he who is to be ruler in Israel. And then there is a new star, Hester. Not you, Ezra. Ruth's only a no, child, Hester, but you... No, Hester, not me. Much as I would like to see the coming of the Messiah, to think of him as coming in my lifetime, it will take more than the words of shepherds to make me believe that he has come at last. <laughs> Mother, she told me all about it. Now you'll believe me. Now you'll know... Where have you been all this day? I didn't understand I you. said, where have you been? Oh, with Jesus and Mary. She let me stay with her while Joseph went to the census. Oh, Mother, she told what me... What she told you is not important. You should have been here with me. You know how much work there is to do with the infill to overflowing. But, Mother, he is the Son of God. Mary just... Enough! We will hear no more of your dangerous fancies about that infant. If the priests of the temple could hear such talk, they'd call it blasphemy. You would bring disgrace and God's wrath on us with your talk. Now, be about your work. Did you understand what I said? Yes, Mother. I understood. <laughs> Do you have enough covers? It's a windy night. Yes, Father. Well, there'll be no going to the stable tonight, understand? Yes. Good night, little one. Father? Yes? The story about an angel coming to Mary. Don't you believe it? We'll talk about it tomorrow. But if he is the Messiah and the Son of but God... But, Ruth, if he were, don't you think his coming would be announced by kings? But if he were... Then he could do anything, couldn't he? Yes, if he were the Son of God, he could do anything. And I could pray to him, just as I do to our Heavenly Father. If he were the Son of God, yes, Ruth. Now let's put out the lamp. Good night, little one. Good night, Father. Little Jesus, I believe you are the Son of God, as the shepherd said. And I believe what your mother said about the angel appearing to tell her you were coming. Please, please, dear Jesus, help my father and mother know who you are. They've been waiting so long. And Jesus, one other thing. Will you help me to hear again? Hester, are you asleep? No, Hester, I'm not asleep. I lost my temper with Ruth today. Did you, Hester? She came to me so full of happiness, and I scolded her. Don't reproach yourself too much. You're tired and overwrought. She knows you love her. Oh, does she? There was something, something she wanted to tell me about the child at the stable, and I wouldn't even listen to her. And when she tried to tell me again tonight, I sent her up to bed. I'm so ashamed. What's done is done, Hester. Well, I'll go to her, Ezra. Perhaps a little can be undone. Ezra! Ezra! Come quickly! Hester! Hester, is something wrong? Is something wrong with Ruth? Oh, no, Ezra. When I came in, she was not in her bed. Oh, Ezra, her hearing has returned. What? It's true, Father. My child. My child! When I came in, she was not in her bed, and then I saw that her window was open, and she was out here on the little balcony, what? just standing here near the edge. I was frightened, and I called out, Oh, Ezra, she heard me. Child! Her, her head was turned away, but she heard me. 
Oh, God has been good to us. But how did this come about? I asked him and he gave me my hearing. You asked him? Jesus, the Son of God. I asked him to help you believe in him and to give me my hearing back. And then I thought I heard a sound, like the whispering of angels. It was the wind in the cedar trees. Then I heard the bells, and I came to the balcony to look. The bells? Look, the bells of the camels. See them, Ezra? Three great camels going toward the stable. Oh, Father, was there ever a sound so sweet as camel bells? This is Dennis Day again. It is over 1900 and some 50 years ago that the Christ child was born in the little town of Bethlehem. He came into a cold, God-forgotten world where might was right and where the poor and weak were oppressed. He came not in grandeur and power, but in humility and poverty and in the helplessness of infancy. And yet his birth brought the dawn of a new day, for the Son of God became man and gave to all men a new dignity and true brotherhood. Yes, whenever and wherever men have lived according to his law of love of God and love of fellow man, there has been peace and happiness and a new prosperity. It is when people or homes of nations forget God, forget the love of fellow man, that unhappiness, hatred, oppression and war come to the world. That is why it's so important that our homes, that all homes, should have the daily remembrance and expression of our love of God in the daily practice of family prayer. So if you do not already have the practice of family prayer in your home, begin it this Christmas season as a gift to the Christ child who gave us himself in love and make this truly a most blessed and merry Christmas. For the family that prays together stays together. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. From Hollywood, Family Theater has brought you Ruth, starring Gigi Perot and Tom Tully, and featuring Mae Clark. Dennis Day was your host. Others in our cast were Charlotte Lawrence, Larry Dobkin, Leo Curley, and Dave Young. The script was written by Robert Hugh O'Sullivan, with music composed and conducted by Harry Zimmerman, and was directed and transcribed for Family Theater by John T. Kelly. This series of Family Theater broadcasts is made possible by the thousands of you who feel the need for this type of program, by the mutual network which has responded to this need, and by the hundreds of stars of stage, screen, and radio who give so unselfishly of their time and talent to appear on our Family Theater stage. To them and to you, our humble thanks. This is Tony Lofrano expressing the wish of Family Theater that the blessing of God may be upon you and your home, and inviting you to be with us next week when Family Theater will present... The Little Prince, starring Eddie Cantor and Wendell Corey. Join us, won't you? <laughs> Family Theater is broadcast throughout the world and originates in the Hollywood studios of the world's largest network. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.